this is the uh, last part of the chapter on photosynthesis uh, in which we study a new type of uh, plant which is called C4 plants. Now normally what we study is the C3 plants and in the C3 plants if you can see uh, RUBP combines with CO2 in the presence of an enzyme called Rubisco. And we form the 6 carbon intermediate which is very unstable and it breaks up into a 3 carbon. Now this 3 carbon is the one which gives it the name C3 plants. And this is called GP. Uh, we won't go any further into the Calvin cycle. I just want you to know that why do we call it C3 plants. Now if you look at C4 plants, now there's something different. The carbon dioxide combines with a 3 carbon molecule. The carbon dioxide combines with a 3 carbon molecule which is called PEP. Phosphoenol pyruvate. And this phosphoenol pyruvate combines with carbon dioxide to form oxaloacetate. And the oxaloacetate is a 4 carbon. And then the oxaloacetate converts into a 4 carbon malate. And it is actually this 4 carbon malate which is going to uh, be giving it the carbon dioxide and the Calvin cycle will continue. So the name C4 plants, the C4 plants come from the word oxaloacetate and malate which are 4 carbon, more specifically the malate which is going to give the carbon dioxide and the Calvin cycle is going to take place. Now basically I just gave you the difference between the C3 and the C4 plants but in studying the leaf anatomy of the C4 plants, it is very different from the normal uh, anatomy of a normal uh, plant which we've been studying C3. So upper epidermis is present, lower epidermis is present, but inside there is a vascular bundle. So there's the xylem and the phloem here, but around the xylem and the phloem is bundle sheath cells, the one which I've made in red. So bundle sheath cells, and we of course abbreviated BS cells. BS is for beautiful story. So bundle sheath cells. And then around it is the one which I've drawn in green, which are called the mesophyll cells. So when the air enters, air is bringing in carbon dioxide and also air is bringing in oxygen. So oxygen and carbon dioxide both enter the air spaces here. But the trouble is that we have to keep the oxygen away from the Rubisco molecule, the Rubisco enzyme, because that combines with oxygen to start photorespiration. So upper epidermis, I'm doing a quick recap, upper epidermis, lower epidermis, vascular bundle in the center. And this vascular bundle is surrounded by the bundle sheath cells. And the green is the mesophyll cells. Now, basically, C4 plants evolved to prevent photorespiration. Now, we have to understand what is photorespiration. Photorespiration is when the enzyme Rubisco helps in catalyzing RUBP with carbon dioxide. But in this situation, what happens when there is high light intensity and high temperature, high light intensity and high temperature, which is in the tropical countries, the RUBP starts to combine with oxygen. You see the word respiration is when oxygen and glucose combine to form carbon dioxide and water. So photorespiration light intensity and high temperatures makes the RUBP, the Rubisco enzyme actually allows the RUBP to combine with CO2 and O2. But when there is high light intensity and high temperature, so photorespiration starts. That means RUBP combines with oxygen and so no Calvin cycle takes place, no glucose, no growth. Now we found the plants that survive in high light intensities and high temperatures were not the same which survived at low temperatures and low light intensities. 
So we looked at their structure and we found the structure was very different. The structure was something like this, upper epidermis, lower epidermis, vascular bundle, bundle sheet cell, mesophyll cells. So we realized that there was some mechanism which was operating to prevent the process of photorespiration. And in this, what we had is we had the mesophyll cells. So the air was entering the mesophyll cells. So air is entering the mesophylls. The carbon dioxide in the mesophyll cell combined with PEP, which is a three carbon molecule. And this three carbon then formed oxaloacetate. And then the oxaloacetate converted to, here we need to add another molecule. Here we needed to add malate. And then the malate entered the bundle sheet cell. And when the malate entered the bundle sheet that it broke up into a now malate and oxaloacetate both are four carbon. Malate entered the uh, bundle sheet cell and there it broke up or it sort of uh, split into a three carbon pyruvate and the carbon dioxide and the normal Calvin cycle took place and glucose was made. So what have we done? We've actually prevented that the enzyme because the enzyme Rubisco is here so we have kept the rubisco away from the oxygen. We've kept it away from the oxygen in the air. And thus we have allowed the plant to make its manufactured glucose and of course it results in growth. And that is going to be helpful in these plants which survive high light intensities and high temperatures. Now if you look at the structure of the two leaves, C3 leaf and the C4 leaf, you can see how the arrangement is very different. There are bundle sheet cells in the C3 leaf, but they're very minimal. But the bundle sheet cells in the C4 leaf are huge cells. And then of course we have the mesophyll cells in both. Here we have the palisade mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll. So the leaf anatomy is different in both the different types of plants, C3 plants and C4 plants. So this is just a comparison which I want you all to see. Then we come on to the last thing, just a quick recap. This would be the basophil cell. This is the BS cell. And you can see a recap here, carbon dioxide entering. This is from the air. And then here we have an enzyme called PEP carboxylase. And this PEP carboxylase combines with the carbon dioxide to form oxaloacetate, which is a four carbon. This forms malate four carbon. And you can see the plasmodismata through which the plasmalate diffuses in, breaks up into pyruvate and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide goes through the normal cycle, sugar, sugar is loaded into the vascular tissue, which is the phloem. And this pyruvate is going to go back. You can see it going back to the, to form PEP. And of course, for this, we need ATP. And this ATP must be coming from the light dependent reaction. So the carbon dioxide from the air combining with phosphoenol pyruvate PEP in the presence of the enzyme PEP carboxylase and then forming oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate converting to malate in the mesophyll cell. Another thing which you have to know is that these enzymes, which is PEP carboxylase, have a high optimum temperature. And these have been compared with other plants, which of course are in the C3 plants, and the same enzymes have a lower optimum temperature. So that is another part of the syllabus which you need to understand is that they have high optimum temperatures, and we have had a number of questions on that. So this is all what you need to know about the C3 and the C4 plants, uh, which is part of the, the last part of the chapter on photosynthesis. And uh, if you can just see a few questions on that. I think it will become easy for you to understand how uh, this is examined in uh, different paper four uh, questions. Thank you.